Hey guys, I'm Ange Designs and welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I'm going to show you how I made the apron for my Sakizo Candy Tea Cosplay. Alright, so you might recognize my current uh, location for my video about the dorset buttons and that's because I did just film that. That's because today I am working on the apron which these buttons are going on, so that felt kind of appropriate. So I thought I would kind of check in and tell you guys where I am at with this project at the moment. So, I have made several pattern pieces at this point. Yesterday, last night, I did quite a bit of math involving scallops and such. Um, this apron's gonna have a lot of different kinds of scallops on it, and the first piece I'm going to be tackling is this, I, I, I wanna call it a bib, um, because I've decided that this will not be part of the apron, but will actually get attached afterwards to my bodice over here. So the first thing we're gonna have to do, of course, is cut out all these pieces. So when it comes to tackling this bib ruffle piece, what I'm essentially gonna do is cut it out with seam allowance on it, cut out on fold, and I'm not gonna cut out these scallop shapes because I'm going to trace out the scallop shapes that I've put on this pattern instead, and then I'm gonna take that to my sewing machine and use a very special function on my machine which allows me to do scallops. Originally, I was going to do this all by hand, I was gonna do hand done scallops. Usually on the stitch, and I use it with a standard thread, the scallops don't hold quite enough. They're a little too weak. But when I use the top stitching thread, they're actually nice and thick and actually look hand worked, which is really interesting. So I'm a little nervous about getting onto the machine and doing the scallops because like it's one of those like make or break it moments, but luckily I think I have enough fabric that's not too much of a problem. But yeah, so that's the first piece I'm going to really deal with. I'm going to deal with the other pieces as I keep going. Okay, so I have now gone around and done all the scallop stitching all around every edge. They're not completely consistent, but also it doesn't matter too much because of the way the scallops look anyway. I'm actually really happy with how this is looking. So this is looking really cool, and of course it's not where you're finished right now, but this is the start and it's one of the more tedious parts and I'm done. But that's looking pretty good, right? Those are, those are scallops on scallops. They're very busy, but that they look good. This means that my next step is I'm going to have to take my Fomori scissors, of course, because they're my sharpest and they're actually some way better ones for precision. And I'm going to have to cut into every little edge and then use fray check. So essentially I am cutting up against the scallops and fray checking as I go to kind of just keep them nice and stable so that they don't unravel and so that the linen that it's on doesn't fray. So I'm gonna be cutting up nice and close to those, to those edges and trying my best to make this a nice scalloped edge. It's gonna be a little on the tedious side, but I think it'll be worth it. I'm really happy with how this is looking so far and yeah, this is, this is looking really good. So yeah, we're gonna cut up really nice and close to those edges and then clean it all up. Woo! All right, we now have this lovely piece all uh, kind of finished. I have all the edges, I have the, um, the freight check all done, I have it all cut. It is looking very good. I am, I am loving this. This is gonna be so pretty. I'm, so, oh my gosh. I, at first I wasn't sure how it was going, but you know what? No, this is very pretty. I'm very, very happy with this. So now my next step is, I do have to do some hand work on this for sure, because I don't have an eyelet function on my sewing machine, unfortunately, so I can't do all the eyelet holes. But before I get to that, I actually cut out a facing that will go on this neckline so that I can attach it so it's nice and clean and finished onto the inside there, because I don't want any surging showing if it like flips up or anything under the ruffle. So I'm going to go attach the facing right now and that will just clean up this piece and then whenever I go to work on those hand eyelets, which will be my next step on this, it'll already be ready to go. Like it'll all be nice and clean and then once those hand eyelets are done, I could just hand apply it right to the dress or the bodice. So yeah, that's where I'm at at this point. I'm going to go attach that facing and hopefully it'll make it a nice clean piece to work from. All right, so currently it is just pinned into place because I'm not quite done with it yet, but the facing is now applied 
on the inside of this little piece that I'm gonna eventually sew on to the bodice like this. But I did pin it on just to see how it was looking and I really, really like it. Like, ah, it's looking like a thing. But before I can finish it, there's a lot of handwork I need to do because there are little eyelet holes, four per large scallop. Thank God, not four per little scallop. That'd be so many. And unfortunately, my sewing machine does not appear to have any eyelet hole function on it, so I am going to be doing them all by hand. So first thing I gotta do is take my pattern and figure out where the holes are going to sit, draw them on, cut that out, and trace it onto here. And then I'm gonna go through and hand do it all, all the eyelet holes. So that's gonna take me a little while, but I think it'll be worth it because I think it'll look really pretty. I think it'll add a lot, especially with the little eyelet holes with the color peeping through. I think it's gonna be really pretty. So I'm going to get working on this. I'm actually really excited because it's, it's handwork. I like handwork. I was fully expecting to do all of the trim by hand, all the, all the scalloped edges by hand. So I'm actually looking forward to just doing a little bit of handwork and spending my day essentially just making eyelet holes. I don't mind doing that kind of stuff and I think it'll add quite a lot to this. This will probably be one of the longer parts of the whole apron. That and I'm gonna repeat all of this again for the waist apron, but I think this is gonna be a nice afternoon of hand stitching, essentially, in my future. I'll probably turn on some Netflix or some YouTube or something and just get to work on that. Cause yeah, got a lot of eyelet holes to make. Cause I have 21 scallops and four each. So I have like 82 eyelet holes to make on just the bib part. And then I have to repeat this whole thing for the waist. So yeah, I got a lot of eyelet holes in my future, so I am going to get started on them. We're getting there and it's looking like a thing and I'm very happy with it. Okay, so it is now several days later and I have finished the little bib piece, for lack of a better word to call it. And I am so happy with how it looks. It's looking really, really, really pretty and it's now completely sewn on to to the, to the bodice and I'm absolutely thrilled with how it's looking. It is really, really pretty. I love this, the technique that I did to do all of this. It added, like I am just, I didn't expect it to go this well. It went really well. So I am absolutely tickled pink over this. I love it so much. I'm going to put her back here for now. So now I need to do that all again, except this time I'm making the, wa the waistband piece, the piece that goes down here, the little frilled skirt piece. So I'm basically kind of doing the exact same thing all over again. So I'm going to go to my machine. I have the piece all traced out already. So I'm gonna put all those scallops in with the, the top stitch function on my machine that has the scalloped edge. We're gonna cut them out, we're gonna fray check them, and then I'm gonna mark on every single eyelet, cut them out, fray check them again, and hand sew on the eyelets. So about to repeat the process all over again. Uh, luckily, I actually really enjoy doing all of this, so hopefully I will not hate this process a lot or anything. Like, I actually, I really liked doing that. It's just time to do a little bit more. I'm glad though that I separated them into two parts, otherwise it'd be very monotonous, like a lot of eyelets in a row. Instead, I get to kind of mix it up a little bit by doing both pieces separately. So, I am going to get to those right now, and then I can work on the rest of the apron, because there was one thing holding me back from completely finishing this, and that was the ribbon. So the ribbon has recently come in, so now I have everything that I need to finish this apron. So now I've just gotta do it. So, let's do it. Okay, so yesterday I managed to get actually the whole piece done for the little frill that goes on the waistband. So this piece is all ready to go, ready to go into the final garment. But I do have to do a few other things to other pieces before I can put it all together. So this piece has been handled, looked after, attention has been given. So now I have a few other options on where I can go. One option is to make these scallops that go on the hem of the whole thing. And then I could also start top stitching on and finishing the edges on both the actual apron and like the bib of the apron. So what I think I'm gonna do is actually tackle the bib of the apron first. Or do I wanna do the scallops first? I think I'm gonna start with the scallops. Okay, so what I'm actually gonna do first before the scallops, I'm actually going to hem my apron piece because um, I need to do that first, just so I make sure the sizing's all correct and stuff. But basically, I've just pressed over quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, and do a little rolled hem. And I'm just gonna throw it through the machine, and we're gonna have a nice little clean hem, and then I can start working on the scallops. 
and then I can attach it to this. So, but first I'm gonna hem this. What you see me doing here is, this is to make the feed dogs, the little things that propel the fabric forward, work properly, because sometimes at the very beginning, especially on a fabric kind of like linen, uh, it can kind of get a little scraggly at the beginning or it can get choked up in the throat plate. So I do this in order for it to be a little cleaner. So the scallops have, of course, the same scallop pattern that's on the hem of the skirt. So uh, first I'm going to trace that onto the piece for, for the scallop that I've cut out and surged and everything. So I'm going to take the same pattern I used for this particular scallop on the skirt um, and put it onto the scallops, uh, onto the facing pieces for the, the apron scallops. So basically I'm going to trace it onto one of these pieces and then I'm going to just stitch them together. I am going to have to carefully stitch and follow those lines just like I did on this other one and that will make the two pieces go together and when I flip them inside out they will ideally be perfect scallops. To do that though I am going to have to snip some corners. I will have to use my pinking shears to get those edges so that they all flip nicely. There will be some pressing involved. But that should be a lot quicker than it was on the skirt because this is a much smaller piece and there's a lot less uh, scallops that are actually gonna go on to this. So yeah, I think I'm gonna handle the scallops first and we'll see where we go from there. I'm making all the individual pieces that eventually will all just go together at the very end all into the waistband piece. So yeah, I'm going to get started on drawing out some scallops with chalk. I now have some pretty little scallops all finished. I've left a little um, room at the very top of this piece right here. And that I'm now going to attach to the bottom of the actual body of the apron. And then I'm going to do exactly what I did on the hem, but a lot less of it. And I'm going to hand stitch the inside. So I'm going to basically attach one side of this. So split it in half, split this in half, attach one side, that side, to the bottom of the apron piece. And I'm going to fold all that seam allowance down and fold this up and hand stitch it all down. So first that means I need to take it to my machine, I need to stitch them together, and then with a bunch of pressing, and then I can hand stitch it all. So this shouldn't take me too long because again, this is not, for me this is not a lot of hand stitching. That length of hand stitching will not take me very long. So I'm gonna do that, and then we're gonna have that piece almost completely dealt with. So we're, go we're doing pretty good actually. I've been doing this for only a little bit, and I'm getting a lot of progress done, so it feels really good. Um, we're getting closer and closer to a final piece that I can put on my mannequin and like finish. I'm really excited about this. So the scallop is all nicely attached now. It looks very good. And now I'm going to start attaching the ribbon because that's the next piece. Now as you can see, I'm trying to my best to like miter the corners without having to do any form or sewing. We'll see how that ends up working out. but. Yeah, right now I'm just gonna top stitch on the ribbon. Uh, both sides get stitched down. I have this beautiful gold color. I'm hoping I have enough for everything needed on the costume. Worst case, I don't have enough for the bow that goes in the back. I don't think I will, but I can order more. And I'm hoping it just goes on nice and smoothly because this is gonna add a nice pop of color, I think, to like everything. I'm very excited about this. I'm very happy I got this ribbon because I was running out of options. For now, I'm going to finish this piece because this is the last step needed to finish the like the actual apron part of the apron. So yeah, let's go do that. Here it is. This is now, so I now have the apron, a uh, piece of the apron done. It's looking so cute. The ribbon went on really nicely. Um, I don't think I'll have enough ribbon for the rest of, well, everything else I need to make. I sh will have enough for the little uh, bodice piece and maybe enough for the waistband, I'm not sure. But when I realized after pinning everything on for this that I didn't have enough, I did order some more. And last time it only took a few days to get here, so hopefully it'll be quick again. Um, I've also ordered it on a week in the middle of the week as opposed to on a weekend this time too, so that should also help. So next I'm either gonna work on the bib piece or work on the waistband. And I think I'm going to start with the bib piece because it has a little bit more work and intention that needs to go into it. So it is just this little uh, little guy, this little thing. It is very tiny, but that's because it just kind of sits below the uh, yoke and stuff. You know, it's gonna be like right here, up in there. Um, so I need to hem the edges first and foremost. That is the, that is the first step here. And then once I have that hemmed, I can put on the little, um, top, I can top stitch on more ribbon. And then I'm gonna put this little facing on it. Um, that will just get attached to the top and then hand sewn down. And that's just to make that area stronger because linen is a little bit of a looser weave. 
and it's going to be holding up. So this area, the waistband will be holding up the waist area of the uh, of the apron, and that'll be like one point of holding things. And then it'll be pinned, it'll be uh, snapped into place here. So I'll make it a little bit stronger to hold on to those snaps. So I'm going to put a little facing. I'm actually pretty pleased with how this, um, with how this ribbon has been top stitching. I was really worried at first because like I don't know if this is technically sewing ribbon. The the place I got it off Etsy was not very specific, but it's been going on very, very nicely. I like it a lot. I just wish that I had the foresight to get more, but I will have enough to at least do this piece. So we're really on a roll here. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that and we're gonna see how that goes. So far, this is going super well. I almost have each individual piece that goes into this ready to go, which feels fantastic. Okay, so it is now the next day. This is where I paused yesterday. So almost every piece is now ready to be put together. I have the little, uh, I guess, bib piece, got a little facing in place. It's looking pretty good. I have the lace piece that goes on the waist. I have the actual apron with its lovely scallops, its top stitching. And now I need to give attention to the actual waistband. Now I realize I actually haven't cut anything for the bow yet. And it's probably a good thing because I will not have enough ribbon to do the bow. So I have ordered more ribbon. Thank gosh that there was a ton um, available. So now I'm going to take my waistband and start applying ribbon to it. Just needs top stitch here, top stitch there, and then that will be all good to go and I can start to put things together. Luckily, I'm planning on making the bow a separate piece anyway, so no problem with that. I can deal with it once I get the other ribbon. So I make the pattern while I wait for that fabric. So I am going to do some stop, do some top stitching here and then I guess I can start putting it all together. We're close to finishing it at this point, besides the bow being uh, untouched so far, but we're almost done. This is really exciting. So uh, yeah, I guess it's time to go top stitch on some more ribbon. Now, before I put on my uh, ribbons, you can see that I've actually added some long gold basting stitches here in, well, the same color as my ribbon. Uh, the color doesn't actually matter for what I'm using these for, but these are so I know exactly where my seam allowance are before I put down the ribbon. So I know exactly where they're meant to go and I have something to line up with essentially. Because in the off chance where my seam allowances aren't exactly even when I go to sew everything together, this will help me keep it all together. This is my point of reference when I'm sewing the seams together and for when I do this. So these will not be staying. I'll be pulling these out later if I even need to. Some of them will probably be completely hidden, but I can now go ahead and put the the gold down like so and I have a point of reference to keep it lined up. So it'll be nice and even throughout the whole thing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch this all. Okay, I really gotta share this because I'm actually really happy with it. So this is looking pretty good for my waist, the top of my waistband, you know, it's looking pretty solid. But when you take this piece and fold it, like you take that one end and fold it here, they line up. They line up perfectly. Keep in mind, I did not do measurements to do this. Most of this was just eyeballing, but I managed to keep them nice and straight and parallel. So yeah, I'm very proud of this waistband. And now that this is done, um, first of all, this is all I have left of the ribbon. This is not enough hardly for one loop of the bow, let alone everything's doubled because there's parallel lines. So yeah, um, definitely a good thing I ordered more of this, but I knew that would be the case. Um, we're gonna keep that though because that might work on the loop of a bow. But even without the bow, I can actually work on finishing this. So I'm going to start to put everything into this waistband. I have my notches marked here. Uh -huh. I need to mark also notch the middle. It's gonna be a very important point of reference, but essentially we're gonna line up some notches. This is my side seam, essentially. If you fold on my notches, it folds in half with enough overlap to make the, look at that satisfying, mm, that is so, oh, I'm so proud of that. Oh my God, how did, wow. That worked really nicely. Anyway, um, those are basically my side seams. I'm gonna find my center front and then I can start putting everything onto it. I'm gonna have to look at my mock-up to see exactly where I put the waistband um, placement on for the, the actual apron piece. And on my apron mock-up, I actually decided to gather in the apron piece. I am going to just pleat it onto here. So first thing I actually have to do to attach everything together is I'm going to work probably on the top half. The top is very small and it just stitches right in. So that should be pretty straightforward. 
The bottom is gonna be a little bit more complicated because there's two layers and those are both pleated. And then I'm going to individually pleat the pieces of my apron and my little waist piece, um, pleat them down, top stitch down those pleats because that will keep them in place so I don't have to worry about the pleats moving around when I'm stitching it to this waistband and then just put it onto the waistband. That is essentially my plan for now. For the bottom, I'm probably gonna be sandwiching both waistband pieces together so it's nice and strong along that seam because that's gonna be holding a lot of weight. But yeah, time to put this all together. So something that you'll see here in this seam is that now there's a lot of thickness. There are pleated seams in here, there's pleated bits, and there's seam allowance. So I decided to actually trim it down a little bit so that it would actually fit here a little better. Otherwise, this seam right here, right at my waist, would have a ton of bulk and you'd see it through. So I just snipped it down carefully and just took out the pleated parts. So the parts that were on that little waist skirt and on the actual apron itself. I also decided that it would be a really good idea to actually uh, understitch a little bit on this waistband to also help that seam allowance flip over properly so it would have a nice clean finish and make ironing this a lot easier afterwards. Understitching is also something that we don't talk about enough and more projects actually could use. It makes everything a little easier. I now have the apron all in mostly one piece, save for the, the, the lining side of my waistband it needs to be hand sewn up. But I have it all pressed up. It's all ready to go and you can start to see, you can start to see the, the, the idea, the image, the thing that we're, the final product. You can really start to visualize it now. I just need to take all these edges that I've pressed in and hand stitch all, all down there to keep it straight and flat so you have your final product. All nice and clean and sewn together. And then I can worry about things like putting the dorset buttons on from my other video, all about dorset buttons, and then get some closures on there, like the snaps that are gonna go on the apron under, under this area here. Then because I need to wait on stuff for the ribbon so I can make the bow in the back, I can just kind of pattern and mock up the bow. I might actually finish most of it besides the bow today. I'm actually pretty excited about that. I'm almost done this whole cosplay at this point, so that's really kind of awesome. So now to apply the dorset buttons, it's actually pretty simple because this basically works like a fabric. If you've seen my video, how, how I make the dorset buttons, it's basically like weaving fabric. It's very similar. So I'm able to poke the, the needle through the little I guess weaving situation I've made here and I sewed it down in three places and I sewed it through all the layers of the waistband which would make the waistband a lot stronger and keep these guys in place. They will not fall off and even if one of them comes loose it will not come off because there's two other areas that are holding it down. And then I found these beads in different shades of orange and yellow and decided to add them into the middle. They're not all the same exact color, but I also really like that element. And so I just sewed it right through. Again, through all layers, just so it's a little bit stronger and so that they're really in place on the dorset buttons. I'm actually really happy with how these ended up looking. Guess who finally got her ribbon for the rest of the cosplay? Right at the end, right at the end, I run out of ribbon and I finally got the rest of it that I ordered the day I realized I didn't have enough. So, something I have gone ahead and done, and I'm just gonna, first of all, basket, woo! Basket the cosplays here, hell yeah. Um, I know this looks very janky, but I've gone ahead and made the rough patterns for the bow that goes on the back of this cosplay. And um, yeah, the patterns are made. The ribbon is here. So that means now I just need to cut out the pattern pieces with seam allowance and all of that. I also got some more interfacing, including a really, really thick, 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 thick interfacing. So I am planning on using that for um, the 
bow part to make it nice and have that, some nice body to it. So it's going to be very heavily interfaced. The first thing before I start sewing it all together will be to top stitch on all the gold ribbons. So it goes all along the edges of the ribbon, goes along that little middle piece, and it goes along the tails. So quite a bit of top stitching to do, but should be a lot quicker than other areas. There's not any corners or anything to deal with. Straight lines, and that's what I'm dealing with. Once I have all the ribbon attached, then I'd go in and sew all the pieces together. Sew the loop together, sew the, sew the actual bow piece together, sew the tail together. And then I'm going to snip some corners, pull it all inside out, press it like crazy, and hand stitch all those pieces together. Once it is a full and solid bow, I can actually attach it to the back of this piece, which I'm very excited for. Again, this is the last piece. I might put extra snaps on the waistband as well, just to keep the bow in place. I don't know, we'll see how the body of the interfacing works with this, but I'm at the last step, I'm at the last piece, and uh, let's get right into it, because I'm really excited. I'm almost done the main parts of the costume from the Sakito cosplay. I'm very happy about this, so let's do it. So then I had all my pieces done. This is the bow loop right here, which gets scrunched in and made through the bow, the tails, and also the middle loop, which gets sewn around the middle. And then I started to play around and pleat the tails around to see how I want to attach them to the bow, and then Muffin decided to intervene in the process. Hello. Hi, what you doing? She's like, mom, I'm on camera now. I was filming and she just took over the entire frame. Wow. Yeah, this is her show. Her. This is her show. Muffin, you are very silly. Yes, she is. I can't tell you that. <laughs> she just took over the whole show. So with Little Miss Muffin in tow, I started to pleat, fold, and start to stitch and pin things down to see how I wanted the tails and the bow to sit. This was just a little bit of experimenting, and eventually I got something that I was really happy with and stitched it all down. Saw Muffin this time because she decided to go off somewhere else. To do this, I just sew through multiple layers at a time so that's a nice strong hold and it won't go anywhere, and afterwards put the little loop that goes around the middle to hide all the stitches. So I now have this adorable finished bow which will go right onto the back of the skirt, um, of the dress, and I can now attach it to the waistband, except I'm not going to attach it right away because I don't like how the back of the apron was sitting, so I'm actually going to redo it. I'm going to take off the hardware that I have applied because I just don't like how it looks in the back so you can see too much of the actual hardware. And because I was using the hardware that I have on hand, which is all in black, you could see it and it just looked ucky, so I'm going to take off all of these and replace it with just two big snaps. I should have done that from the beginning, but we're going to do it now. As for attaching the bow, there are two ways I'm thinking I might do this. One, I might just sew it right to the waistband, or I might experiment by taking this wire hanger and making like a little frame to just slip it into the back waistband so it sits kind of on top and not directly on the waistband, if that makes sense. So instead of it sitting like blunt with it, it kind of sits above it a little bit to kind of hide the whole thing. I don't know, I'm going to experiment with some things. I feel like that might be a more I don't know if secure is the right word, but it might be a, just a, a nice way of just putting it on easily and without it moving or like, I think it might just look nicer for it to slip into place on the waistband. I don't know. I'm gonna try some things out, um, but first I'm gonna fix these hardwares because they're bothering me a lot. But other than that, I'm finishing this bow today. That's, that is the plan. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go do this. So the apron is now completely finished and I am ridiculously happy with the results. I knew this piece would be pretty challenging. I knew there was a lot of detail on it, like putting the dorset buttons on there, which have their own video on my channel if you're interested in learning about how I made those. All the eyelet lace and of course all the, all the numerous things of top stitching. This piece was incredibly fun to make. I enjoyed every minute of it 
and I am so proud of it. Like everything from the scallops and the top stitching and I, I am so, so happy with the eyelet lace. I actually cannot describe it. I think it really adds to this piece, really makes it, brings it to life a lot and adds a lot of personality and character and really makes it feel like it's from like the Edwardian period. I loved how the dress was looking before at first. Like, oh man, I'm gonna cover all of this up with the apron. But now that I have the apron done, I'm like, wow. I am so happy with the results. I am so happy you guys have come along on this little journey with me. And now you may be wondering, why aren't you wearing it right now? Why aren't you doing a full reveal? Well, that is because we're not done yet. There is still one more piece that needs to be looked after before we can finish this all. And that is the boots. So I will be soon showing you how I'm going to take these boots and turn them into a more historical looking piece. So we're gonna do some boot alterations pretty soon in this channel. So be sure to like, subscribe and all that good stuff to keep in, uh, keep in the loop for when that comes out. Because at this point, I don't know when that will be because I'm still waiting on some supplies for these. Another reason I'm not gonna be wearing the whole thing for this little reveal is because I think this will require me revealing the whole thing. So I want the whole thing to be finished before I reveal me wearing all of this. I'm so happy with it and thank you all so much for coming along on this journey with me and I can't wait to show you all of it all together. So be sure to like, subscribe and all that good stuff. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. See you guys later.